When you become a believer, although you still have trouble in your life, you have peace and a sense of presence which lifts you above the world and keeps you safe. I know my life has been a journey of adventure and excitement and also many trials. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. I was a Muslim, now I am a Christian. Come join me as I begin this new life. What makes Arabic food? We are with friends in Phoenix, and Huda is cooking. Oh, they found out she knows some great recipes. Let's see, Huda, what are you going to cook for us? I will cook a, a typical Arabic food. Mm -hmm. The chicken with the rice mm -hmm. and a lot of herbs. Sounds good. I'm going to go over and get a picture of the pot. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oops, have I got it? There we go. It looks delicious. Did you tell us what the spices are? Cardamom, chicken stock, onion, um, black pepper, uh, cumin seeds, uh, turmeric. I'm expecting turmeric coming because it must be yellow. We're making progress. Yeah. What is this, Huda? This is, we call it uh, tomato sauce, and you have it with the rice. But this is garlic? The garlic. Tum. 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 Tell us how you made it. How I made it? It's just a bamboo of the mind, of the basal, and the sin hand. Come on, hard. With the last word, with the warrah, by the mega cubes. بحطه مع ماء وبغلي وبعدين لما ينطبخ أصب الماء وأحط زعفران وأحط الشيكن بالأوفن وبعدين بعد ما أحطه بالأوفن الماء بعد ما أصب فيه بحط مع الرز وبطبخه على نار هادية فأشياء كثيرة. What makes a prophet? How do we know that any person who comes and says, I am a prophet, follow me, listen to me, I will show you the way to God, how do we know if they are telling the truth or not? The Bible warns us that there will be false prophets. Why should we believe anyone who comes with a message claiming to be a prophet of God? When you think of that, it is one of the core questions of life. Because once we come to believe that God exists, how do we know if he's speaking to us? Is he reaching to us from outside, from the sky, from anywhere? Is he trying to touch us? Does he use prophets? Does he send word? Talking to many, many Muslims, hundreds to thousands of Muslims over the last 10 years, I have discovered that most Muslims think that every prophet brings the same message that we, as say, um, people listen to prophets because we go astray, we forget why we're here, we start to sin, we need someone like John the Baptist, Yahya, to bring us back, to look at God, to repent of our sins, and to walk the true path. And to some extent, yes, prophets do that. The true prophets of God bring us to the worship of the one true God. But is that all that they do? The purpose of a prophet is to bring God's message to the people, warn the people of their sins, and predict important events in the future. Many people have said that they were prophets. Many. Are they all of God? How can we know? 
the Bible tells us what to look for in a prophet. Prophet Moses in the Old Testament told us that a prophet must always speak or foretell the truth. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. So Moses told us a prophet needs to be right 100% of the time in what they say and in what they predict. If they something, say something will happen that doesn't happen, then they are not speaking the word of the Lord. So that's our first uh, criterion of what makes a prophet. Jesus said, people will come and claim to be prophets. They will claim to be of God. How will you know them? Jesus told us, look at their fruit. Jesus told us to look at the fruit of the prophet's life and teaching. Matthew 7:15. Watch out for false prophets. Every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Let's look at the fruit of the people that we call prophets. We can look at the fruit of their life and the fruit of their followers or the cultures that they bring. When I look at Jesus, I see someone who is peaceful, someone who is loving, someone who teaches us to love others, someone who respects women, who teaches women together with men at the same time as men, someone who cares for the poor, someone who lives very self-controlled, who doesn't abuse women, who does not tell his followers to kill, but who tells them, speak the words that I speak with you, share them, and love and give to others. Freely you have received, Jesus said. Freely give. So the fruit of Jesus' personal life was beautiful. Two ways we should be thinking about if a prophet is of God or not. Does he always speak the truth? And does the fruit of his or her ministry bring forth goodness to the world? That fulfills both the criteria of Moses and the criteria of Jesus. In John, in Johanna, chapter 5, Jesus tells us that there are three reasons we should believe that he is who he claims to be. No other prophet has ever had such proof. When Jesus was challenged about his prophethood and who he said he was, and it became more clear as he was going on, in his ministry that he actually was claiming to be God, which was considered blasphemy, horrible crime. The religious leaders of those days came to him. They didn't like him. Jesus' teaching was different. He did not honor the religious establishment in the way they wanted. So they kept challenging him. And they said to him, you say you're a prophet. Okay, why should we believe you? And in the book of the Apostle John, in Jil Yuhanna, in chapter 5, Hamsa, Surah Hamsa, something like that, in that chapter, Jesus gave three reasons why we should follow him and believe what he said. And friends, those reasons are still valid today. John the Baptist, Yahya, testified that Jesus was the expected one, the Lamb of God. That was the first validation Jesus gave for why to believe him. He said, you hold him as a prophet. And he said, I am the one that you've been waiting for. Did you know people were waiting for Jesus? They knew someone special was coming. Those prophecies did not go unnoticed. And there were hundreds of prophecies about Jesus. And John the Baptist said, this is the one you were waiting for. And because John the Baptist, Yahya, was so popular, everyone knew. And they knew that he had testified for Jesus. So he just brought it to their memory. He didn't need to say, oh, there was some guy, you know, in a, a little village. No, they knew. In fact, we're told in the Bible that 
the religious leaders knew about John the Baptist and they, they were afraid to ever say anything against him because the people honored him so highly. So Jesus uses John the Baptist to validate that he is who he said he was. He is a prophet. He is the Messiah who fulfills the prophecies of the awaited one. And Messiah means anointed or the chosen one. And John also said he is the Lamb of God, which we'll talk about in another episode. And he's the Son of God. So all Jesus needs to say is, John. Jesus performed miracles like no one ever has before or since. The second proof Jesus gave was his own ministry. And people used to look for miraculous signs. That wasn't a totally necessary sign of prophethood. You didn't have to do fabulous miracles like Moses, but it did help. But the people also knew that there were false miracles. And I ask you people to remember that because around the world, there is power in every religion. It may not be power of God. It may be from other forces that you don't want to deal with. But we can't only look at miracles because almost every religion will have miracles. However, the miracles of the type Jesus did were so amazing and different and unique. He healed people that had been blind since birth and healed people who had been deaf. People would say, there's never been a miracle like this. They had seen miracles, but they'd never seen them like that. And in fact, Jesus raised people from the dead. One of them was Lazarus. And Lazarus became so famous after he was raised from the dead that the religious leaders wanted to kill him because people just came to see, oh, that's the guy that was raised from the dead by Jesus. And this is after he had been in the grave three days. Jesus also did read, raise other people from the dead, but three days was very impressive. So we have our second reason for believing in Jesus. There were hundreds of prophecies about Jesus in the writings of prophets. The third reason Jesus gave was the prophecies. And Jesus had these major prophecies about his birth, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, and his purpose. He fulfilled hundreds of prophecies. In fact, the book of Matthew is largely written to people who knew what those prophecies were. Many times he takes a little time out of his story to say, as was spoken by the prophet, and friends, I ask you to look at any prophet that you might think of following and ask yourself, does he have any, anything anywhere near as great as those testimonies for Jesus? The three that we talked about, especially a major prophet testifying for him, miracles of incredible degree, and many, many prophecies. And if we add the one that Jesus himself gave, which was fruit, Oh my goodness, no one has any fruit like Jesus in his personal life or societies that he began. What fruit do we see in the lives, teaching, and cultures that arose around those claiming to be prophets? Folks, we know the world is not perfect and no place in the world is perfect. But I want to ask you a question. Which are the countries that people from all over the world want to move to? Are they the countries based on the Christian faith? Or are they countries based around any other religion at all? Any religion. So I ask you that. Because I believe that even though no country is perfect, countries that were founded on the principles Jesus taught us have respect for human life, and freedom and things that were valued from Christ and corruption and immorality are looked down on even though freedom does allow immorality so friends I ask you to look at your prophet are you following Jesus are you following Muhammad the Bible warns us we must follow the original teaching of Jesus and his Apostles Prophets who claim their message is better than that of the prior prophets must have proof equal to or better than that of Jesus. Neither Muhammad, 
Joseph Smith or Song Myung Moon have the three criteria Jesus presented for himself? Does Muhammad have these three criteria? Friends, look very hard. I did not find ever any other prophet testifying that Muhammad was the one he claimed to be, especially not a prophet of John the Baptist stature. There is debate if Muhammad did any miracles. Um, most people say no, that the Quran was his only possible miracle. The third thing is prophecies. People were not expecting Muhammad. Any Christian who has read the Bible was not expecting Muhammad. They know what those, uh, those uh, passages are about. Muhammad did not have any of the three proofs that Jesus claimed for himself. The same thing could be said of Joseph Smith, of Sun Myung Moon, of many prophets out there today claiming to speak in the name of the Lord around the world. And I tell you, friends, be so careful of which prophet you follow. Letters to Hoda. A brother shares how the Bible changed his life. One day, when I was debating Christians when I was a Muslim, one Christian, he handed me the Bible and he says, read this verse, read it out loud. And it was the verse that radically changed my life. It was John 14, 6. When I read it after debating these Christians, I read it, but it was more than just words off a page. It planted a seed, that seed in which God will eventually bring the fruit. Um, I read, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come out to the Father except by me. My argument, every, I had no rebuttal. I didn't know what to say. It was as if I heard words that opened up from heaven and it just poured into my soul. And then from there, God moved me to a different city. I had no Christian, well, I, I had no Muslim friends, I had no Christian friends. It was just me and God and the scriptures. All I kept remembering was that verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that just kept echoing and echoing where I started to pray and ask God, who are you? God, do you love me? And so it's not just really one verse, it's two verses. John 14, 6 is what, what planted the seed. Romans 5, 8 is what closed the door on Islam and opened up to a world of love, the world of who God is. Romans 5, 8 is what changed, radically changed everything in my mind. For God demonstrates his love for me, even while yet I'm a still sinner, Christ died for me, changed everything for me. I didn't understand theology just yet. I didn't understand the Trinity, the deity of Jesus. I knew something, that the God of the Bible loved me unconditionally, while the God of the Quran loved me conditionally. I knew I was a sinner, and I knew I needed God's unconditional love. Romans 5, 8 changed me. Roman, John chapter 14, verses 6 planted the seed to seek after truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Growing up in the Middle East, did you have a chance to learn a lot about the Christian faith? Oh, no, no, no. Um, uh, it's very hard because the, the way you grow up, it's very hard to um, know more about uh, uh, Christianity because the way you study and the way you in school, you know, we don't learn beside Islamic ways and the rules of Islamic, that's it. I mean, we can even if we had a questions, we cannot ask more questions if we go to the Jesus because uh, uh, you're not supposed to. And, so uh, you, you wouldn't feel comfortable asking a question? No, no, we, we couldn't. For example, you told me one time you had a Christian friend in in elementary school when you were very young. Yes, Would you true. feel comfortable asking your family questions or your imam questions about what you know what do the Christians believe or 
No, we I I can I couldn't ask, and uh, it's like being uh, we doing a saying if we touch uh, uh, the Bible because as an Islam we don't believe that this is a real Bible, and you're not not supposed to to read it or to uh, search in that, and that's what make us grow up as a very strict Islamic way, not to know and read that Bible and study it and knowing very clear what's in it and how Jesus uh, was putting that Bible in a very clear way but uh, they are saying that everything is not real on that book and as a Muslim we are only stick to our Quran and that's it. What did you know about the Bible growing up as a, a child or about Jesus or God or Christians? Did you, what did you think that they believed? You know, unfortunately, I, uh, I, we don't know not that much. Like, you know, we have it in, in our Quran, Jesus, and he, like, be, he came as a prophet, but not, he didn't give a lot of, of his um, um, uh, rules. You know, it's like a small, short, and we believe that the, the way we are in a Islam, that Muhammad came and he uh, end all of the rules and he put everything as he's the last prophet but uh, you know when you start reading the bible you start learning that there is something wrong here that i felt i start like to learn more and more when i start seeing that jesus came to be the last prophet and not as the what we learn as islam that muhammad was the last prophet you see because that there, moses brought laws and jesus brought grace. Exactly. In fact, in Yohanna, in the Injil Yohanna, it says the law came through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So why would we go from the law to grace back to the law if Muhammad brought another set of laws? It's not a new message. It doesn't fulfill the old message like Jesus fulfilled the old message and brought grace. Why would we go back? Why would we go back to say, polygamy, to rules, to harsh punishments. After Jesus brought grace and truth and the life through the Spirit, the Bible tells us that we are given grace and freedom as Christians, but not freedom to use it for bad purposes. Okay, maybe we don't have to go strictly by the rules of Moses, but the freedom that we have in Christ should be used to um, bring deliverance to ourselves and others to spread goodness and joy and following from the heart, not from the law. In fact, the Bible tells us in Galatians, there's a book called Galatians that the Apostle Paul wrote. And uh, through this Holy Spirit, he told us that the law was like a teacher, like a harsh teacher, a taskmaster. It showed everybody their sin. And then through that law, when Jesus came, they could see they were not perfect and they needed a savior. And Jesus brought that grace, that forgiveness, and that truth. So the law served its purpose in many ways. Once that fulfillment of the law had come, we saw we need a savior. We saw the plan of God made perfect, the fulfillment of the prophecies. Why would we go back? And this is what the book of Galatians tells us. Why are you going back to living under a system of laws? Because the people in those days, many of the believers were from the Jewish faith, and they kept trying to go back to the law to live that way. And it was a big adjustment to learn how do you live under grace and truth and live a moral life, but still live with this new freedom we have in Christ. So that struggle goes back to the early church. And I see that you are saying that's the same struggle that Islam has today is living under the law. Buddha has challenged her to find all the spices yeah, possible, so she's <laughs> checking and checking and checking. For a fabulous dinner. It should be fabulous. 
Huda, yes. can you think of any way that what you're doing is similar to life? Can you give us a life or devotion, a lesson, daughters? I mean, had the, is there a lesson from this? Yeah, I mean, I have a different time. 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 I have herbs and things to cook because I'm in a guest house my good people friends but I will try to do as my best to come in the end in a good way and good taste hopefully is that like life in any way yes it's me that is like our best in our life to do you know we cannot be perfect but we do all our best to become uh, pleasing our God do we always have everything we want or need in life that no. we think no. we need? No. And we, no. 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 We, so we, but we try. We, try. we take the ingredients we have and we do the best we can with it. Exactly. <laughs> Just like you are in the kitchen. Yes. Okay, thank you so much.